Back in the day, I used to work as a department store clerk in our local shopping mall. Our mall was very infamous for its many urban legends. From ghosts, cryptids, serial killer dumping grounds, to cult hideouts, you name it. One of these legends I've proven to be true. I was stationed that day in the store's dressing room. We were always assigned randomly to different tasks, but the dressing room was what I liked the least. Not too many people tried out clothes, so it felt boring, and that day was no different. It was almost lunchtime when the sixth customer approached the dressing room. He was carrying a pair of jeans and a polo shirt. I ushered him inside to select a booth for him. I could have just let him inside on his own, but this was our standard procedure. When I walked in, I was surprised to see that one of the booths already had its curtains closed. That would mean someone was already using it. I paused for a bit to ponder this. Then I quickly remember the customer. I can't keep him waiting. So in my rush, I automatically pointed him to the open booth beside the already occupied one. After closing his curtain, I turned back to the other one. I was positive I left them all open an hour earlier, and no one had come in ever since. Thinking I might have just forgotten this one, I reached over to open it. Before I could, however, I saw the movement of a shadow under the gap beneath the curtain. Backing away, I cursed at myself for almost peeping at a changing customer. Management wouldn't take that lightly, so I quickly got out of the room and went back to my post. A few minutes passed and no other customers went into the dressing room. In fact, I couldn't see anyone in nearby aisles. I was all alone in the area for a while. My solitude was instantly broken by the crashing sound coming from the dressing room. It sounded like someone pounding against the cubicles. I ran back inside to check on the customer and ask, Sir, are you okay? Stepping in the room, I only just thought of the person I insisted beforehand, but seeing the two closed curtains reminded me of the other one. I stood in front of the two draped, wondering from which booth the sound might have come from. No one responded to me, so I asked again, Sir, are you okay there? Suddenly, the curtain from my right slowly started moving. Behind it, a person peered out, taking good care not to open the curtain too much. This was the one who was already in the booth when we came in. Before I could inquire what was wrong, I was taken aback. Something looked weird about this person's face. He was looking a bit pale, like someone sick or dehydrated. I didn't want to be judgmental, though, so I shrugged it off. I told them about the loud commotion I just heard and asked if they needed any assistance. This person looked at me for a bit and shakes his head ever so slowly. It was a bit unnerving. Without a word, they closed the curtain again, and there was nothing else I could do. I stood there, mouth agape, trying to process what I just saw. I then proceeded to call out to the other customer. Sir? There was no response. Not even a rustling noise. Frustrated, I finally decided to crouch and look underneath the curtain just to get a glimpse of his feet. Shocked, I pulled the curtain completely open. The only thing left inside the booth were the clothes the customer was carrying. The room only had one exit, and I was guarding it. There was no way he could have sneaked out. I turned my head to the other cubicles, making sure he didn't just switch, but the other drapes were undisturbed. In the middle of my confusion, I was rattled by another loud banging. It sounded so much closer this time that it made me jump. I knew then where it was coming from. The booth with the weird customer. My heart started pounding fast. In hindsight, calling the security guard might have been my best move, but as frightened as I was, my curiosity got the best of me. 
With shaky hands, I held the curtain, carefully sighing so as to not make any noise. The side of the customer's weird face slowly came to my view, but as I pulled further, his true feature began to unfold. His face suddenly looked normal compared to the rest of his body. The figure robotically craned its head towards me, exposing its full features. I'll never forget those eyes. All three of them. The thing's gaze locked me in a trance while its bulging spine rose up until it almost touched the ceiling. I was only able to break into a scream when I noticed that the other customer's lifeless laying in the monster's grip. At the same time, I caught a movement in our peripherals, the thing's tail slithering towards me. My instincts kicked in, and I was able to dodge out of the way. Thank goodness I managed to reach the nearest security guard. After hysterically explaining everything to my manager, we called the police. I instantly forwarded my resignation. There was no way I was going to spend another day in that damn mall. I didn't care if they believed me or not. Though, through the following months, cases of missing people who visited the mall began to increase. There was even an investigation that led the mall to closing its doors a year later. No bodies or remains of those who disappeared were ever found. So, I've been walking around, searching, hoping to find other places besides the plain graveyard and that the yellow hallway. I came across this, a TV, a CRT Betamax player to be exact. It was just out there, laying around in the middle of nowhere. It already had a tape in it, which is the story you just witnessed. I have a feeling that there's more of these out there. Looks like it's time to go for another walk.